Welcome back to the NCAA Women's College Cup presented on ESPN by Enterprise Rent-A-Car. Jessica McDonald with a goal for North Carolina. They have the lead 1-0 over undefeated Stanford. Yeah, let's take a look at those first half highlights, including the McDonald tally. Well, Casey Nagara does a world-class cross to Jessica McDonald running on, and here it is again. Jessica McDonald does a great job of finding the space between the two defenders, and that's why she was able to finish it on the frame. And well, here's some physical play. Both of these teams, you can tell, really, really want to win this game, and players are falling everywhere, fouls are flying. The referee is actually doing a great job of keeping things intact, but not calling too many fouls. I like what he's doing. Let's take a look at the Code Zero game track. We've talked about how North Carolina needs to get pressure. Look at the advantage in shots on goal and in corner kicks. And we also talked about how Stanford needed to have the possession in their favor. And that was definitely not the case in the first 45 minutes. Two thirds of the Cardinal goals scored this year have come in the second half. They have that ability to try and wear teams down and break them down. Look at that, including a goal in the second half in the semis and then the Kristen Press golden goal in overtime in the semifinal. One change too for the Cardinal, they will start Mariah Nogueira in the midfield here in this second half. I think Coach Ratcliffe realized what a present she brings to Stanford and maybe he was resting her at the, in the first half for this whole second half. Maybe she was sick, we're not sure, but now she's in there, she's a presence and North Carolina really has to key on her, especially on set pieces. Free kick coming up for Carolina. Casey Nagara will take it. She scored a goal in last year's championship match on a free kick. Nagara keeps it low. The ricochet cleared out and off of the six by Allie Riley. Casey Nagara does a good job of keeping it low. It looks like she was shooting there. I think I would have preferred to maybe cross it in. You have such great headers. And Amber Brooks, 22 for North Carolina, and Jessica McDonald, number 47 for North Carolina. McDonald with the throw in, and it's a short one. But you could hear Kira Maker, the goalkeeper, keeper, telling her defense to set up as if it was a corner kick because McDonald is usually very good at long throw-ins. Well, she's very good, and I think it's kind of slipping a little bit in this weather. Lucy Bronze settles, shoots, and misses wide right. You can see Jessica McDonald's wiping her hands on her sleeves, trying to get some traction on the ball. But when, when it's wet, you, there's not much you can do about the ball in your hands until it's going to be hard to get a really good throw on the ball. That long throwing can be such a weapon for Carolina. She said yesterday at the press conference she learned how to do that as a youngster playing basketball. And obviously the ball is heavier. And all the chest passes and the overhead passes that she made in basketball made her much better at the throw-in with the lighter soccer ball as she uh, switched careers. And she said it all, all of a sudden just came to her. Like she had always had the throw-in. She just never knew she had it. But uh, I think a lot of it also has to do with some strength. <laughs> Pretty initial spin move by Nagara, then taken off the play. Good defense by Stanford. Can the Cardinal get Kelly O'Hara and Kristen Press more involved in this second half? They're two All-America candidates. And the best combo in the country this year. One or the other has scored a goal in 21 of their 25 matches. Well, Nagara there does a great job of just keeping her balance. And a lot of times, as an athlete, balance is so important and you don't really think of it, but working on your core and just working on your balance, that way you can stay up on your feet and keep the ball going, which is exactly what Casey Nagara did there. Tobin Heath gets her first touch of this second half, or actually already three for Tobin in the early going. Played in front, Heath. Tried to scoot by a defender. Brooks to Bronze, Lucy Bronze, who had the assist in the semis, and that one played at Maker. 
We've been talking a lot about the high pressure of North Carolina being a key for North Carolina and the possession for Stanford being the key. I think in this second half, what we really need to look for is can Allie Riley and can Rachel Kwan, the two outside backs for Stanford, can they get forward? They've been possessing the ball in their own defensive half. Can we see them getting in line even, getting to the 18 and making some crosses? That will really help Kristen Press, Kelly O'Hara, and Lindsey Taylor up front. That way they can have more numbers and outnumber the three in the back from North Carolina. As it has been a phenomenal season numbers-wise. I mean, you know, when you think about Stanford soccer, you think about players like Julie Foudy and Sarah Raffinelli, two of their all-time greats. And uh, the numbers for O'Hara and Press this year, better even than Foudy. Now, Julie wasn't a major goal scorer. She was usually the playmaker. But nonetheless, it gives you a little perspective about how good these two have been this year. Well, she, she might not have been the best goal scorer at the national level, but I bet you she was a great goal, goal scorer for Stanford. So it's impressive. Here is Press. She's got O'Hara in the middle. And for Stanford, it's first corner kick of the match. All right, here we're going to be looking for Mariah Naguerre, she's getting in there, she's getting a little bit late, but here she comes, you can see her raising her arms to look for it. Harris got a hand on it and it popped over the top of the crossbar, but Naguerre was very close. Well, that's what Stanford wants to see. They want to see Naguerre get in the battle and Ashlyn Harris from North Carolina does a, a good job of putting the pressure on her. That's why it goes over. But Mariah Naguerre is the one that gets in there and with such a great presence, you want to find her the ball. And I think that's why she's starting in the second half. The Pac-10 Newcomer of the Year. Making her presence felt here in our national championship match. Kwan, back to Jenkins. And now Garcia Mendez to Naguerre in the midfield. Looking to build. Pass goes through to Eveland and the ricochet to Riley. Pushing up the left flank, Riley's cross. Trying to find the foot of press, broken up by Given. And the sliding tackle and the stoppage in play as McDonald goes down hard and the official really over in the ear of Kelly O'Hara. No card issued. Jess McDonald gets in front of O'Hara. O'Hara definitely gets a cleat onto Jess McDonald's. Looks like her right foot right there. Yeah, it definitely looks like it's a cleat to the to the foot, and and that that never that never feels good. You just kind of have to walk it off, and that's probably why you're hearing the pain and agony coming out of Jessica McDonald's mouth. But you know, as, as much as that's a foul, I love seeing Kelly O'Hara track back. She wants this game. She wants to win it. It's her senior year, and. Um, you just hate to see anybody get hurt from a tackle, but you like to see the physical play. I think Jessica McDonald's going to be all right. Yep, and a very fine line, too. You've always got to be careful on trying to take somebody down from behind as, as opposed to coming at them or coming from the side. That's when the cards start coming out. Well, I think there's no yellow card in this situation because you're in the offensive third for Stanford. Had it been more in the defensive third, and it would have been a yellow. Had it been the last defender, that would have been an automatic red, and Kelly O'Hara would have been out of the game. So it is a, a very, very dangerous tackle, and she has to you know, remember that and not do it again. Given with the restart, they waited for McDonald to get up into this penalty area. A ricochet, Evelyn. Stanford trying to apply some of its own high pressure. Settled by Courtney Jones. A sophomore out of Danville, California. Play back to Harris. Rivera tried to turn it over to Riley and too much on it. I think North Carolina is doing a very good job right now of actually playing Stanford's game, keeping the ball on the ground, finding people's feet, not really finding the space too much because they realize the field and the weather and how it's going to affect them. And I think right now they're doing a really good job of trying to keep the ball on the ground. It's going to pop up, but they're trying their best to keep it on the ground so they can possess a little bit better. It's been raining all day. The field is draining very well, but certainly the grass is slick. We've seen the ball skipping and skidding. Off 
the head of bronze. Riley will be able to get to it for Stanford. Cleaned up by Evelyn. And a throw in for the Cardinal. They are really trying to pick up the pace here. Looking for the equalizer. Well, what I like there, that's twice for Allie Riley that she's been able to get forward. O'Hara able to turn on it. We saw it in the Home Depot coaching clinic and in the semifinals on Friday that she doesn't need a whole lot of space to turn and burn. She really doesn't need a whole lot of space. She does a good job of trying to find a little bit. North Carolina actually does a much better job of getting to her, not allowing any kind of easy shot. And you can tell by how the shot goes up, she was leaning back and that's why she didn't get it on frame. Reminder about ESPN's Monday Night Football coming up at 8.30 Eastern on Monday with Green Bay and Baltimore. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern on ESPN with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's. And the whistle goes against the Tar Heels and now a free kick for the Cardinal. Hillary Heath will take it. Nagara again will be a target. McDonald is actually defending on her. Punched out by Harris. Nagara over to O'Hara. Trying to get it back to Casey and across midfield. Already we're seeing a different Stanford team. They have controlled the possession here early in the second half. I'm just getting a little sense of confidence coming out of the half. They seem to be getting the ball, playing possession, finding their outside backs. Allie Riley's gotten up front twice, close to the end line to get a pretty good cross in. She caused a corner on one of them. They're just finding what they're good at, and they're finally playing the way that they've been playing all year. The Cardinal have been sensational in the second half all season long, about two-thirds of their goals coming after they've Returned from the locker room, and this is O'Hara again. Pushing it wide. Back to Levin, broken up by Tobin Heath. Nagara. Gonna let it rip, blocked by Whitney Engen. Throw in for North Carolina, but they will probably give it right back to the Cardinal. Uh, they knocked it out so that Tobin Heath could get some attention. She's the injured Tar Heel. She's doing a great job of keeping the ball. Ouch. It looks like Levin stepped right on her foot and that's why she went down right on top. And that's where all the bones are and it's just cracking. And when you have cleats on, you just get a really good step on her. Hopefully it's nothing too dangerous and she'll be able to walk it off. Kind of like the same similar thing with Jessica McDonald on a, on a foul. And it looks like she just got her good and she's walking it off. So Heath, a member of the U.S. national team, she appears to be okay. She'll stay in the match. By the way, we, uh, we have heard from Julie Foudy, the uh, Stanford alum. And here's what Julie had to say about this championship match would be the ultimate dream after all the years of abuse she's taken from former Tar Heels on the national team that she would be able to send some abuse their way for once if the Cardinal can bring home the championship for the first time in school history. She has received a lot of abuse. I'll be one to buy for that. <laughs> the penalty and the card going against the Tar Heels. Outside the area. And it's Klingenberg whistled for the trip. Yeah, Klings just gets a little clip on the back of Verlu here. She's trying to trying to track back from her, and Verlu has some long legs and looks like Megan Klingenberg kind of got a little clip. And when you're running back like that and Verlu has all the momentum, I think Megan Klingenberg definitely deserved the yellow card there. Heath will take the kick from just outside the area. Right in front, Harris got a piece of it and blasted out by Bronze. I have really been impressed with Ashlyn Harris today. She's made three big saves coming off of her line. Her range out there is, is showing why she's been in the national team pool and why she's one of the best goalkeepers in the country.
the counterattack. Alyssa Rich. Now Bronze. Misguided on that attempt. A goal kick coming up. We've talked about the Carolina pressure and the Stanford possession as the keys to this match. We've seen plenty of pressure from the Tar Heels, but look at the change for Stanford in the time of possession. They are now possessing it more in the second half than Carolina has. Well, it looks to me like the North Carolina pressure is actually tired. The three players up front look a little tired, not really running after the ball too much, and that's why Stanford's doing a much better job of possessing it. Anson Dorrance, who likes to go to the substitutions, perhaps may need to consider doing it even sooner if this continues to play out this way. Well, I was kind of surprised that he, 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 didn't, he never subbed Casey Naguera out of the first half, and I, I'm, I'm guessing that she's pretty used to coming out and getting a little bit of a break right before half. I know she's a very fit player. Press will let it go high over the crossbar. But when you have that high pressure, it's always hard to, to keep that up for 90 minutes. It's hard at any level. And the key change, of course, in the second half, you can re-enter if you have been substituted out. Press does a good job here of getting the long-range shots. She has an excellent long-range shot, as we saw in the semifinals, where she scored the winning goal. But right there, Stanford just isn't getting over the ball. And when you're leaning back, when you're shooting, that's when the ball goes over. And for Stanford, they have to focus on getting over the ball because that's when it's going to be low, that's when the ball will skip, and I'll make things a lot more difficult on Ashlyn Harris, the goalkeeper for North Carolina. The NCAA Men's College Cup will be in Cary, North Carolina next weekend, starting on Friday, December 11th, with coverage at 5 Eastern on ESPN2. For more information on the 09 Men's College Cup, go to NCAA.com. It's the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. Virginia and Wake Forest in one semi, North Carolina and undefeated Akron in the other men's semi. That's coming up next weekend. And then the Women's Volleyball Championships on the ESPN Family of Networks the following weekend down in Tampa. Great time of year for college sports fans. Cardinal have gotten a few opportunities here in the second half. McDonald gave the Tar Heels the early lead in the third minute, and it has held so far. I can hear uh, coach, assistant coach from North Carolina, Bill Palladino, screaming, up, up, up. He's trying to get all the pressure up, and the, the high pressure comes from the three in the back. If they push up, the midfielders push up, which means the forwards push up. And right now he's screaming up because the high pressure just isn't there for North Carolina. Press was offside on that play. They've been offside four times. North Carolina dominated the statistics in the first half. But Stanford doing a much better job on the possession here in the second half. Evelyn, that's been a terrific matchup with her and O'Hara. Up on the left side. I think the nice thing for Evelyn is that she has the speed, and so she can get a little bit closer to O'Hara because she's not as afraid of the speed beating her. And that's why it's been such a good battle between Kelly O'Hara, number 19 for Stanford, and Christy Evelyn, number 32 for North Carolina. And Evelyn and Engen have been back there together for the last two years. They've been starting for the Tar Heels the last four years. Engen making the move back from the midfield. They will be a tough nut to crack for the Cardinal. Klingenberg trying to push forward, take it away. Bounds pass redirected. Riley has some time. And she was bumped by Courtney Jones, whistled for the foul. That was a little football-esque 
bump, and I think Courtney Jones, number 84 for North Carolina, gets that from her dad, Brent Jones, who played for the 49ers. So she has a little experience from that. Riley with Bronze giving chase. Ailey Riley put a smile on your face the other day, Catherine, when she is a converted defender. She said she was promoted back to defense when Stanford made the move a couple years ago. You, of course, a former All-American defender yourself. Well, it's definitely a promotion, in my opinion, because I did the same thing. I used to be a forward promoted to be a defender. Time now to uh, look at our Lowe's Senior Class Award winner. The 09 winner of the Lowe's Senior Class Award is Texas A&M's Emily Peterson. She's maintained a 3.9 grade point average in finance, and she led the Aggies to the NCAA tournament this year, reaching the Sweet 16. During the NCAA, she scored a goal and added an assist. Congratulations to her, the Lowe's Senior Class Award winner. And already the Tar Heels, as we anticipated, have made a couple of substitutions. Brooks now has gone out, and Allie Hawkins has come on. It's been a pretty good weekend in uh, Aggieland as Nagara puts it over the top. The A&M volleyball team upset LSU in the second round to move on to the Sweet 16 next weekend. They've been terrific hosts for us this weekend. I've been impressed mainly with this field to hold up in all the weather they've been having. And I mean, it's in great condition considering snow and rain and just cold. <laughs> Jones has some space off the head of Rich. Jones, her cross cleared out. McDonald is not in the match right now, so uh, she won't be there for the long throw in. Bronze will take it. Lucy's a member of the English national team. Ricochets off Naguer, and here comes a corner kick. And without Jessica McDonald in here and Amber Brooks, let's look for number 76, Allie Hawkins. She got a pretty good opportunity in the first half. We'll see if she can get one in this half. Lebrano checks in. North Carolina on the far post now. Chested out by Nagara and O'Hara on the run. Nagara turns her around. Kelly O'Hara. The anticipation is she will be the Mac Herman Award winner as the National Player of the Year. Trying to help her Cardinal get the tying goal. You can just see how dangerous Stanford is there. Getting Rachel Kwan up front and outside back for Stanford. Unfortunately, she wasn't able to keep possession of the ball, but she was up front. That gives Stanford so much more space on the outside, which gives Kelly O'Hara and Kristen Press and Lindsey Taylor space to work in the middle of the field. Approaching uh, the midway point to and another timeout coming up here in a couple of minutes so that the coaches uh, can uh, make some adjustments. 15 substitutions in the semifinal for Notre Dame, uh, for uh, the Tar Heels against Notre Dame. Seven today with more to come. All a part of their high pressure system of play to get fresh legs on and keep the pressure on the opposition. To ask anyone to play in this high pressure system as a forward for 90 minutes is a very difficult task. And I know that a lot of the forwards on this team wish they could play all 90, but Anson knows how important this system is with high pressure. And that's why he has to keep the subs going. And in the second half, you can come in and out as you once. And that helps a lot in this system. Lugano slides it over to Guerra. Got a twister on it, saved by Maker. That one had all kinds of English. Well, Maria Lebrana does a good job of finding Casey Nagara 
And Casey Nigger does a pretty good job of shooting a one-touch shot on frame. What I would have liked to have seen instead is she was 1v1 with her defender. If she had just taken a touch, she could have beaten her. She's so crafty on the ball. She could have beaten her defender and probably gotten a much better shot on goal. But fortunately for Stanford, it wasn't great. It was easy for Kira Maker just to handle the ball. Five goals in this NCAA tournament for Nagara, including the game winner in the semis. She has been unbelievable over the course of her College Cup career for North Carolina. Four game-winning goals in her five matches in the College Cup coming into today, and she assisted on the goal in the first half. This is Nagara with the ball at her feet. Chip it up to Rich. Throw in Tar Heels. Heath. Nagara. I'm on your right. I'm on your right. She'll launch it from deep, trying to get a skip. And that's Casey Nagara for you. She'll just shoot from anywhere. And for most boards, that's normally a cross, but she decides to shoot it. And it's not very dangerous for Stanford. And I know that Stanford's probably thinking, we'd rather you shoot from there than right in front of our goal. So they were pretty happy with that result. This is the break midway through the second half. North Carolina leading one to nothing. Going for that 20th national championship. The Cardinal seeking their first. They've had some opportunities here in the second half. We continue our commitment to the V Foundation for Cancer Research in tribute to Jim Valvano and his dream to defeat cancer. The goal in the first half from Jessica McDonald holding up so far. 22 and a half minutes to play and Anson Dorrance, the head coach for the Tar Heels joining us. Anson, what was your advice to the team during the timeout? Uh, just now, uh, we've got to weather the rest of the Stanford storm. They're coming after us. We've got to figure out a way to weather it and uh, try to ride this sucker out. Well, it seems like there's not as much high pressure as there was in the first half. Is that because the legs are a little bit tired? Yeah, Kat, you know, you played for us. I mean, after a while, you just can't sprint anymore. <laughs> we've hit that stage. Uh, the front runners just can't work any harder. And we're running out of juice, so uh, uh, let's see uh, how much longer we can hang on. All right, thank you very much, Anson Dorrance, the head coach for the Tar Heels. Jessica McDonald with the goal in the third minute to give Carolina the lead. The possession in the second half has been about even, which is a big improvement for Stanford. And they have had a couple of scoring chances trying to get the equalizer, but right now the corner kick to the Char Heels, that's their ninth to just one so far for Stanford. And this angle for Rachel Given, number 16 for North Carolina, taking the corner kick is very difficult because she's taking it with her right foot. So it's not, instead of it bending into the goal, it's bending out of the goal. So it's really hard to read and it's really hard to get a good, a really good cross on it. Rich tried to turn on it. Another deflection, Heath playing it back. And O'Hara's got it. Evelyn breaks it up, and O'Hara is going to get carded for this one. Uh, she slammed into Evelyn. And some words from Whitney Engen coming to the aid of her teammate for O'Hara. Well, Evelyn does a great job of stepping in front of the ball, and unfortunately, Kelly O'Hara just had too much momentum to stop, and that's definitely a yellow card because it's a little bit reckless. And you can tell that Whitney Ingen from uh, from North Carolina is trying to defend her defenders, and as a center back myself, that's how I do it. And uh, as you could just see right there, is another great opportunity for North Carolina on corner kicks. Hawkins into the area. Before that kick, O'Hara did go over to Eveland, and uh, the two made up. So now press on the counter. Played back forward by Lucy Bronze. Settled by Taylor, nice turn on it. Cardinal are on side. Verlu giving chase. Hawkins, now out to Nagara. This is Taylor again, looking for some space. Heath is on her. Through three jerseys, she's able to keep it. Sliding it through the press. 
O'Hara wants them to change fields and come to the left. Lindsay Taylor didn't play the whole first part of the second half, so she's going to have some fresh legs playing in that attacking center mid role. She can really help this three front from Stanford pressing on as they've only got 20 minutes to try and tie up North Carolina. So an all Pac-10 uh, performer. There's the Stanford Cardinal 25 and 0. It's the 12th time that a team has come to the College Cup without a loss and without a tie. And those undefeated teams of the previous 11, only four of them have won the championship. The other seven were unable to complete the perfect season in the 28-year history of this tournament. Nice move by Rich with the touch by one defender. Looking to get by another. The left footer, corner kick Carolina. Good rush by the freshman from Cincinnati. Alyssa Rich from North Carolina makes really good decisions there, taking her defender 1v1. But Alina Garcia Mendez from Stanford does an excellent job keeping her feet and making sure that Alyssa Rich doesn't get a good cross on. It might have resulted in a corner kick, but Garcia Mendez does the right thing. Nine more corner kicks, 10 more shots today for Carolina than Stanford. And the official uh, heading over to the sideline. Corey Rockwell uh, getting a uh, shin guard on for Allie Hawkins. That was very nice of him to run over for her as she's probably <laughs> tired. <laughs> the face of the goal and out. Carolina unable to jump on it. That's not the corner kick that they were probably hoping for, but what a dangerous corner kick that was. It slipped right by everyone. Here it is, the low line drive right into the middle of the box and everyone from North Carolina and Stanford missed it. Had a North Carolina player even gotten a slight touch on it, it probably would have gone into the goal. Cardinal making a substitution now. Camille Levin is in. Rachel Kwong goes out. She can return. That's an interesting substitute. I think Camille Levin being a, a forward mainly, they're trying to press UNC as they know they've only got 18 minutes left. Wide to Rich. Nogueira is there to help. Casey Nogueira. Had it knocked loose. Good hustle by Stanford to get there first. And Hawkins no, 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 no. continues to have some trouble with the shin guard. She's picking it up off the ground again. O'Hara wins it in the air to press. Looking to get it back outside O'Hara, but Engen is there to turn it away. Terrific play by Whitney Engen, the ACC Defensive Player of the Year. And look out, that's another yellow to O'Hara. And she's gone. Two yellow cards. for the leading candidate for National Player of the Year honors, and she is sent off. And the Cardinal will have to finish the game a player down. I mean, you know, you, you love to see a person come back, but to me, that's an obvious, a, a, an obvious yellow card. It's not a red, but when you're going at someone's leg, that didn't even look like she was going for the ball. And uh, after the previous play of, of Christy Evelyn going straight for her body, and this one, unfortunately for Kelly O'Hara, that's definitely a yellow card, and you just hate to see that because what a great player. You want to see her finish this game because you want to give Stanford a chance to tie it up. They can still do it, but it's going to be a lot harder now. Two yellows in the second half equals the red, and O'Hara is sent off. And now Stanford will have to finish the match with just 10 players. Well, what a calmness presence that Whitney Ingen, Ingen, number nine from North Carolina, brings. It was a smart play. It looked like she was going to go back to the goalkeeper. She decides to bring it out, not put the pressure there with the field being so slick. Because of her calmness, she was able to dribble out, and that's what forced Kelly O'Hara to foul her. And it's just a little bit of frustration coming wow. from Kelly O'Hara. And the senior 
Has to be aware in that situation already with the yellow, not to take any chances. Under 17 minutes to play. And the rest of the Cardinal come to her aid. Engen and Eveland, along with Gibbon. Heath in the midfield. Now Riley. Press. She'll launch. Save Harris. That's a great shot from Kristen Press. It also what it does to the Stanford team and gives them confidence. Look at this shot. It's fantastic. Ashton does a great job of not trying to control it, just punching it out, coming right back to her. But now Stanford knows, hey, we can still get shots on them. We might only have 10 men, but we have some great forwards and defenders that will keep us in this ball game. They can still come back and tie it. They just have to work a little bit harder. Press is being very vocal right now as well with her teammates urging them on. Just after the red card, you heard Paul Ratcliffe say, hey, we'll have to play with just two up top. And right now that's Press and Taylor. I don't think that's gonna last very long though because we're getting to 15 minutes left in this game. And you just have to put everyone up top. Put everyone there because what do you gotta lose? If North Carolina scores another one, at least you were trying. And I think you're gonna see three, maybe four go up top and maybe just two in the back for Stanford at one point. Looks like Courtney Verlu. The freshman from Tualatin, Oregon, has already started that push forward. Out of bounds off of Levin and out. Let's take you back to the first half and the difference right now in the match. Well, Casey Nagara is a world-class player and she sends in this ball and Jess McDonald finds the open space. And it's every defender's nightmare when a board finds that space in between each other. Miscommunication leads to a goal scored by Jessica McDonald. Stewart Smith. Into the lineup for the Tar Heels, number 22, Amber Brooks. Along the, the other big seven. news Jessica McDonald. As McDonald looking to strike again is the red card to National Player of the Year candidate, oh, Kelly O'Hara, sent off in the 73rd minute for accumulating the two yellows. And they are only playing with 10 players. Heath, the bouncer to make her. And it looks like North Carolina knows that they're playing with 10 players. And now they've put two midfielders at defensive position, one being Tobin Heath at the attacking, and only two players up front in Casey Naguera and Jessica McDonald. So North Carolina is now playing for this victory as they're up 1-0. Naguera as McDonald tried to slide it through for Jessica. She gets the shot. Just missed it wide right. She wants that one back. She definitely wants that one back because she had a wide open goal. She just decided to do it too quickly. She should have just calmed herself in the box. She had plenty of time and space and what a great ball by Casey Nagara. And here comes Press the other way. She's got Verlu in the middle. Kristen Press, she'll launch. The deflection goes to Heath. Nagara. Lebrano trying to run on in a foot race with Riley. Eveland is there. And approaching 13 minutes to play. The Tar Heel seniors closing in on a third championship trophy. If the score holds, they will have beaten an undefeated team in the final on all three occasions. And what a senior class it is with the nine seniors. And Anson Goins told us yesterday at the press conference, it was a group worth waiting for. He said he was watching a tournament six years ago and the U16 team was, he thought, more talented than the U17s. And he said, you know what, we're gonna take a risk and we're gonna save up as much money as we can for scholarships for the younger players, this senior class. And boy, has it paid off. They missed out on the College Cup the year before they arrived. And then Nagara and Heath and company won the 06 championship with seven freshmen on the field that year. 
They came back to win another one last season and are now closing in on a third. Unless the Cardinal can get the equalizer and offsides, the call on Stanford. Stanford called for offsides. Well, this senior class has some world-class players, that's for sure, in Tobin Heath and Casey Nagara. A lot of them are seeing some national team t uh, call ups and everything, and, and you can see why Anson decided to take that risk on that U16 team. Five times offside for Stanford. Under 11 and a half to play. The Cardinal trying to tie it up to keep the perfect season alive. They're 25 and 0. Nagara left for no good. But it ricocheted off the defender. And Carolina can spend some time here off the clock before taking the corner kick. It's interesting to me that North Carolina is actually getting more shots now that they only have two up front than when they had three. But I think the reason is it's 10 men for Stanford as being one of them. And then obviously Stanford's having to push forward a whole lot. So North Carolina's had some pretty good opportunities right now. Warning from the official to North Carolina to speed up the pace of play. That one will scoot all the way through to Tobin Heath. She'll chip it back in front. Nagara heads it out. Heath back to get it. Christy Evelyn for North Carolina. Can they add another one to the dynasty? 19 NCAA titles. Let's go back to a moment ago there and McDonald's opportunity on the feed from Nagara. One of these many chances North Carolina has been getting lately. Casey Nagara splits the two defenders. Jessica McDonald makes a great run. Look at that splitting both defenders. If only she had just kind of taken a deep breath. There was a Stanford defender running after her, but I still think she had more time than she thought and she rushed it and that's why she pushed it wide. Ingen, beach press to the ball, but Verlu's got it now for Stanford. Under 10 to play. North Carolina with possession. And the one nothing lead on the Jessica McDonald goal in the third minute. For the Stanford Cardinal, they are playing a man down after their National Player of the Year candidate, Kelly O'Hara, picked up her second yellow card of the match in the 73rd minute. The Tar Heels looking for their 20th NCAA title. The Cardinal coming into this one undefeated, looking for its first. And what you're going to see from both of these teams is for North Carolina, they're just going to be playing the ball forward. You're going to see a lot more direct, play it to the corners, waste as much time, and take no risk in the back. But for Stanford, I'm looking right now, and they only have two in the back, maybe three with Rachel Kwan keeping going forward. They're going to have three up top. It's going to be high pressure from Stanford now, while UNC is going to take no risk and just keep getting it out of the back of their back of their defensive third. And they will continue to get fresh legs into the match. The substitutions are waiting again over on the sideline. North Carolina's already used seven in this half alone. Anson Dorrance actually took Nagara off for a moment to catch her breath, and now it looks like Casey will return with Megan Klingenberg. Oh, Help us beat cancer with the V Foundation, proudly awarding 100% of your donation directly to fund cancer research. Log on to JimmyV.org or call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V to donate today. This is Nagara with bronze playing with one more player on the field casey unable to track it down under eight minutes to go in the finals mcdonald right now with the game winner for a tar heel team that has uh, faced its ups and downs this year they actually lost three matches in ACC play, and they lost back-to-back -back games for the first time in nearly a decade against what Anson Dorrance has called the toughest schedule that his team has ever played. And it has certainly battle-tested them for the College Cup. Today is the ninth top 10 opponent they have seen this year. And you can, you can tell 
the experience from playing those teams is really helping North Carolina because even when they went up early, they didn't let it affect them. They've still played the way that they know how to play, and it just allowed them to keep this 1-0 lead for, the, for most of this whole game. Again, they're trying to work some of that clock down to 6.45 to play. No stoppage time in college soccer. Jones. Scoots through to Angan. To Evelyn. No Carolina teammates have started more matches together than Angan and Evelyn in the history of the program. Trying to help send each other out with another national championship. Six minutes to go in the final. And watch for Whitney Ingen. She's a leader of this back line, but she is limping pretty badly. She's had some ankle problems, and I'm just watching her walk. And she seems to be in a lot of pain, but I think as a senior, she's like, I've only got six minutes left. I'm going to play through the pain, and it's not going to matter. I'm just going to make sure to get that ball out of there. Stanford has now brought Allie Riley up to an attacking position from her left back position. Press, trying to get through the traffic. Gets the throw in. Well, you're bringing a senior leader up there, someone who's skilled, who's played in World, World Cup matches, Olympic matches, and when you put a player like her up there, she's going to put high pressure on the North Carolina defense. She's going to bring a, a different aspect to the Stanford offense that North Carolina hasn't seen all game. She's going to be interesting, what she, interesting to see what she can do in these last five minutes. Twenty-five and zero. They've trailed five times all year, and they've come back to win them all. They've got under five minutes to work with, and playing with one less player on the field. Their possession in this second half has dipped under fifty percent as the. Pressure from North Carolina has won out thus far, and Riley got kicked on that play. The foul against the Tar Heels. Foul called on North Carolina. Well, I don't think Stanford's too worried about possession anymore. They just want to play direct style soccer, get the ball up into their attacking third so that it puts the pressure on the North Carolina defense. Jenkins will take the free kick uh, right on the midfield line. Chips it in, headed out by Given Heath. Looking for Majera, the nice touch over to Jones. It's three on three right now for the Tar Heels. Bronze is gonna slow up though, and Jones turns it back over. Reminder, we got college basketball coming your way tonight. Women's hoops, Texas and Tennessee tonight at seven Eastern on ESPN2. Juan goes down, another free kick with three and a half minutes to play. Anson Dorrance closing in on a 20th NCAA title for the program and the trophy just taken out of the bag over there next to the field. Press gets a corner kick. And for Stanford, they need to take their time here. They don't need to rush it, they need players in the box. Nagara looking to turn on it, blocked by the other Nagara. Hawkins can't clear. Riley touches to press. She's double teamed. And Nagara just sends it into space. 2.45 to play. On that corner kick, I think Kristen Press rushed that, that corner kick. When you have the bodies up, it, it makes things more chaotic for North Carolina. They didn't have enough. That's why North Carolina was able to clear it out. There's still two and a half minutes left. Take your time, take a deep breath, because that might be your best opportunity. Noyola with the burst now. Taylor. Over to Riley. Lingenberg, the ricochet into the box. Hawkins drills it. 
Two minutes to go to decide the championship. The Tar Heels in blue with the 1-0 lead over Stanford and White. The offside flag went up right in front of the Stanford bench. They don't like it at all. That's twice they found the back of the net and twice offsides. You know, that's a close call because it looks like Evelyn was keeping her on for a little bit, but I think that Evelyn stepped up just in the nick of time to keep her offsides. It's a close call. It's a bold call by the referee, but what a great shot by Press. Back to Stanford. Verlu couldn't contain. Jones to Nagara. North Carolina just trying to hold on for the final minute and 10 seconds. Verlu, double teamed. One minute. One minute. Over the end line, and it's a corner kick with under a minute to play. Stanford. Everybody coming up for Stanford. You've got to send everybody up. You've got 45 seconds left. Make sure you get a good kick on this, though. Wait! Heath heads it out. This is the goalkeeper maker trying to play it forward. And Jones lost it out of bounds. The frantic restart. Tobin Heath, oh, what a play to keep it in bounds to work the clock. 15 seconds to go for the Tar Heels. They were offside. Final 10 seconds. The McDonald goal in the third minute. Gets the Tar Heels a 20th NCAA title. The 09 National Championship Trophy is going home to Chapel Hill. The undefeated season comes to an end for Stanford. And North Carolina, the senior class, goes out on top with its third trophy and the 20th for the Tar Heel program. Jessica McDonald with the goal in the third minute, assisted by Heath and Nagara. And then the other critical play, the O'Hara red card in the 73rd minute.